uh, Brother Jomo and I will split our 10 minutes, uh, five minutes apiece. But go ahead, Brother Jomo, take it away. Right. So I, I, I'll, I'll say this. I want to address, we have a, we're going to have a problem here with language. Uh, for, in America, most of us aren't bilingual or, or trilingual. So a lot of PMs, people don't understand the nuances of language and how language works and how words not only have meaning in context, but in you take Greek and Hebrew, you learn about morphology. Uh, I have people in my family and myself. I'm not super bilingual like my daughter, but I, I definitely understand Spanish a lot better than, uh, than most. One of the challenges that we this conversation just brought up as Brother Bill went to the Greek is 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 a couple things one uh when we use words and we use language uh authors are often speaking in present tense particularly in in the bible they're speaking in present tense like you're just like a movie if you if you watch uh a, a movie on the past they write the movie on the past in the present so that the authors and those that are listening are captivated and caught in the moment I'm, I'm arguing that this is what the biblical writers did because they almost always wrote what took place in the past in a present day format. They wouldn't run around writing and jotting. However, let me address this real quick. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But you do not see that progressing until in the future. So you have a statement of a, of a past issue that comes up later. You have Adam, who the Bible says died, and then you see the progression of it later. We are all born, and this is interesting, we're all born, but we all age progressively and die, and you see that. So if I made the statement that somebody, at the moment that they're born, they're born to die, you would argue it from what you see from the natural. But when you watch the present progression of age, what you see in the end is that every man dies. But at the beginning of birth, you don't see that. So if you take what Brother Preston is saying and you don't look at what the Bible teaches through its progressive truth, Adam dies in the moment spiritually, but the progression of the manifestation of physical death comes later. What we see in the context of history through all of Bible is that man continued to die and die earlier and earlier and earlier. So we have to eliminate physical death from the conclusion if what brother Preston and brother Bell is saying it's clear from the evidence of history make the statement the statistics on physical death are quite accurate one in one always die you do not get to separate physical death from spiritual death when we talk about the bible last point this is why jesus's resurrection was physical he did not just die spiritual. There was a physical death where he was buried and then he got up on the third day, thus proving that he defeated death. If there's only a spiritual resurrection, then for all those that have died, you have no proof. It's the same thing with Lazarus. So what we're doing is we're not actually looking what the Bible says through the progressive truth. We're extrapolating scripture out and then playing word games with grammar in Greek and Hebrew without looking at the words in its morphology and its context. The authors communicated in present tense language a lot so that we could be captured in the moment. That was a methodology that almost all storytellers use. So when we go to the language process without other people to understand grammar and language, that all gets murky. Now I agree, we do got to use grammar so we can so we can understand uh, you know what we're saying. But I think that's a that's a false play on how authors wrote and how authors continue to write and it doesn't really address why they did what they did. So, so that's 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 my part on that. That's okay. a misrepresentation of 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 how biblical authors write to take that and then pull that in and say he wrote in the present tense to Thessalonians. That would mean this: that every book ever written is only to that audience and has no preference or reference to anyone outside the communication. That's what that would mean: that every book ever written. Genesis is only written to those in Genesis. Exodus is only written to the, the, the Torah is only written to that group. Every letter that Paul ever wrote is only written to that group and has no reference to future believers or other churches that was around that day. 
which simply isn't the case of scripture. And it says this, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the uh, endurance taught in scriptures, the encouragement they provide, we may have hope. All scripture is to all believers at all time, not just one particular group. That's a misrepresentation of the use of scripture. All right. And in addition, so uh, for the Jomo already dealt with the uh, immediacy of scripture and how it's not just mere, surely there are current applications, but it is what is also considered what we would call the already but not yet principle of scripture. Scripture can have a present day cultural application but also have future implications as we see in the book of Second Thessalonians. Surely they were being troubled because there were those just like there are today who believed that the resurrection had already taken place. That was part of the issue with the Thessalonian church, which is what we're debating today. But Paul made it explicit to them that there were certain things in the future that must also take place. And again, although we would agree that the destruction of the temple did fulfill in, in, in a uh, already type of way, many of the things Jesus spoke of regarding the judgment upon Jerusalem, that does not negate the future aspects of the ultimate judgment that would come upon the world. And we kind of showed that. Now, let me just hit on uh, when you begin to discuss about the eternal world, world without end. Well, we do not believe in annihilation of the world, right? If you understand what scripture is saying, this world will endure forever, but not in this state. And if we can read that right out of the book of Romans chapter eight, verse number 20, it says clearly for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. So what? We live in the current world subjected to futility. We see the curse of Adam not only affecting mankind, but we see it affecting creation. But verse 21 clears it up that the creation itself will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. So there won't be a perpetual world in this state because the creation itself will also be set free, right? Into the freedom of the glorious children of God. And it's earnestly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, which, which means uh, our bodies, Philippians 3 verse 21, who shall change our vile body because the implications of what you're saying is that there's no physical resurrection and everything becomes spiritual but that again is an attack against the foundation of the christian hope who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself and as i uh, mentioned in the introduction, and I think which is one of the major implications of the belief that is being purported through preterism is that perpetual sin, perpetual uh, murder, lying, rape, none of that ends, right? None of that ever ends in the preterist view. Uh, but again, as Jomo brought out so wonderfully, that when death is swallowed up in victory, that is the end of death. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more tears. There will be no more heartache and pain for those former things shall be passed away. So though we believe in a perpetual continuation of a, re of a renewed earth, we do not believe that we continue in this sinful state. Again, that would be an attack on the foundation of our Christian faith, and we cannot help have that because as believers we are waiting for the son of god to appear that he might change not only these vile bodies but creation itself